Hi, welcome to Late Night Stocks. How are you doing? After a roller coaster week for CureVac investors, I would like to talk about CureVac's mRNA platform and compare the company with another second wave COVID-19 vaccine maker Novavax in this video. Let me summarize what we talked in previous CureVac videos. In our first video in May, we saw 3x potential next year if the company can get the approval with good efficacy and produce up to 300 million doses this year and 1 billion doses next year. In our second video, we looked at the latest news about CureVac and updated our stock price prediction. You can find further details on our vaccine stock videos. Please don't forget to check our vaccine stock playlist and support our channel just giving a like. On Wednesday, 16 June 2021, the company provided an update on phase 2 trials of its first generation COVID-19 vaccine candidate. According to the press release, the vaccine candidate demonstrated an interim efficacy of 47% among 40,000 participants in 10 different countries. The number was disappointing and the company lost almost half of the market value just in a few minutes in the aftermarket. The number was around $10 billion. Can you imagine it? In addition to this, the results suggest efficacy in younger participants, but didn't allow to conclude on efficacy in age group above 60. As you know, the virus endangers mostly elder people. Let's talk about the efficacy problem. Scientists initially estimated that 60 to 70 percent of a population needed to be immunized to acquire resistance to coronavirus to end the pandemic. Now they have increased the numbers and it is estimated between 70 and 90 percent. If you vaccinate a population fully with CureVac's COVID-19 vaccine, you will never reach a herd immunity. When we look at the annual flu shot efficacy rates, they are between 40 and 60 percent. Both the World Health Organization and Food and Drug Administration set a threshold of 50 percent efficacy to consider COVID-19 vaccines for emergency authorization. If the vaccine has 47% efficacy in final analysis, it would fail to meet that standard. According to experts, it would be difficult for CureVac to recover. They don't expect a dramatic improvement of the efficacy rate because most of the data is already in. When we compare three major mRNA vaccine makers such as BioNTech, Moderna and CureVac, we should look at their technology first. All three mRNA vaccines encode a form of the coronavirus spike protein, which helps virus particles to penetrate human cells. But the Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines use modified mRNA, incorporating an mRNA nucleotide called pseudourodine, which is similar to urodine but contains a natural modification instead of urodine itself. CureVac's vaccine uses normal urodine and relies on altering the sequence of RNA letters in a way that does not affect the protein it codes for, but helps the vaccine to escape immune detection. Another important criteria is dosage to reach desired efficacy. BioNTech injects 30 microgram per dose to reach above 90% efficacy. CureVac limits it to 12 microgram due to abnormal side effect. The company called it disruptive low dose technology, but it seems more self-disruptive. According to Peter Klimsner, an infectious disease specialist at Tübingen University Hospital, who is leading CureVac's clinical studies, the vaccine dosage can be blamed for disappointing results. They observed already at higher dose levels in phase 1 testing too many side effects, with trial participants frequently complaining of problems such as severe headaches, fatigue, chills and injection site pain. Due to this limitation, they probably couldn't increase the dosage to reach high neutralizing antibodies level. This could be an early warning signal to the company and started to develop a second generation COVID-19 vaccine with GSK. In other words, the modified mRNA has won the game. The CureVac CEO blamed the variants for low efficacy rates. But is it true? One of the latest research in Qatar shows that Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine protects against worrying coronavirus variants. People in Qatar who received two doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine 
per 25 percent less likely to develop a case of COVID-19 caused by UK variant. According to World Health Organization, Moderna has about 92 percent efficacy against UK variant, but they are also working on booster shots in case the efficacy drops against new variants. As we see, CureVac rivals have done a good job. I think the CureVac vaccine design could be faulty. We looked at the mRNA technology so far. On the other hand, CureVac's competitor Novavax announced recently the results of its COVID-19 vaccine trials. The vaccine candidate, Prevent-19, demonstrates 90% overall efficacy and 100% protection against moderate and severe disease. The vaccine is protein-based and uses recombinant nanoparticles. Please check our first Novavax video for further details. The vaccine also showed success among high-risk groups. This is a true victory and important milestone to end the pandemic. It is also a tremendous opportunity for the company to become profitable after 34 years without having a product. The company will file for regulatory authorizations in the third quarter. Novavax remains on track to reach a manufacturing capacity of 100 million doses per month by the end of third quarter and 150 million doses per month by the end of fourth quarter 2021. Good news for humanity and also investors. The results show a good vaccine development practice against different variants. To be honest, CureVac's argument about the variants can convince me. When we compare the companies, they have similar market cap. Novavax can compete with first-class vaccine makers like BioNTech and Moderna from the efficacy point of view. On the other hand, CureVac vaccine efficacy rate is overall worst among COVID-19 vaccine makers. The approval with this rate seems not possible. Novavax can produce up to 2 billion doses annually and has a good partner in India, namely Indian Serum Institute. CureVac also has global partners but can produce up to 1 billion doses annually. Novavax looks like risky and a better bet. When we summarize all information that we mentioned in the video, the company can get the approval by by August if the vaccine can show better results in ongoing trials. Low efficacy is a big problem and should be over 50% at least. The company is behind its schedule and losing its market position day by day. Second generation vaccine development with GSK will like to be start in Q3 2021 and the vaccine available in second half of 2022. If the first generation can get the approval, the investors will be probably see vaccine revenues in Q1 2023. Now we are heading to the end of the video. Please do also your own research and leave your comments below the video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.